Hello and welcome to Hawk Magazine. We have another exciting lineup for you. On today's show, we'll talk with Hilbert's head baseball coach, Drew Fitry, about last year's magical season and plans for the upcoming one. And then we'll talk to the team's first baseman, Patrick Whalen, a graduate student from Buffalo, New York. After that, we'll go over to the rink and talk with Hilbert's new women's head hockey coach, Earl Utter. Along with Coach Utter, we'll talk with the outstanding center, Abby McNeil, a sophomore from Calgary, Alberta. All that up next on Hawk Magazine. Hi, I'm Chris Cronin, and we're here today with Coach Drew Fedry. Drew, welcome. Hi, I'm happy to be here. Um, I have a couple questions for you. How many years have you been at Hilbert? Uh, this will be my 10th year coming up, so I've been here nine years, and we've seen a lot of positive growth since I first stepped foot on campus. Um, how did you become involved in the game of baseball? I've been playing baseball since a young, I was a young kid. Um, you know, this, I've probably been involved with the game for over 25 years now. And, uh, you know, every year it just becomes that much more special for me to be able to still be a part of the game and give back. Very nice. Um, what is your playing experience? So um, after playing at St. Joe's, I went on to play on scholarship at Niagara University. Um, had some unbelievable experiences there, learned from some great people, and got a chance to travel the country during summers uh, to play summer ball in different collegiate leagues. So I, f I feel like I've uh, you know, gained a lot of experience, and it's really helped shape me into the coach I am today. Very nice. Uh, what is your expectations for the season in 2024 after coming off a successful 2023 yeah, I mean, any time that you can have a great season and, you know, return most of the pieces that got you to where you were the year before, it's always heightening expectation for the following year. But every year has its own challenges. We're aware of that. And right now we're just trying to take it one day at a time and see if we can, uh, you know, get to a point where we're peaking at the right time come late April, early May. Um, you were the Sal uh, Bascalia Coach of the Year last year. How did it feel to win that award? It, it was an honor. Um, I look at it as really a full team award because we wouldn't have been there if it wasn't for all the hard work put in by the assistant coaches and by all of the people involved with the program, especially our student athletes. Um, so, I mean, I, I was happy for all of them to see that, you know, we were able to bring it home to the baseball team. Very nice. Um, why is baseball important to have in a college program, a college athletic program? I, I think any, really, any sport is important to have within a program or within a department um, because it, it brings a lot of different things to the community. You know, it gets, it gets people excited. Um, you know, I, I think that it's been well noted that student athletes have strong retention rates. And, um, you know, I, I think our program specifically is providing a, a lot of hope for uh, a lot of different people on campus because we, we have a lot of good things going right now. Um, you know, we, we see constant growth year to year, and it's really ascending even quicker than I would have expected. Very nice. Um, what are your challenges of playing baseball, um, especially in the Northeast, to begin, um, like, in the winter months, March and April? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, naturally, there's a lot of challenges that come about just because of where we're located. Um, you know, the Northeast has it tough in, in the wintertime, but uh, the nice thing about Western New York is we're, we're really – fully committed to developing baseball players in general. So there are many different uh, indoor facilities that we can take, a, take advantage of during those months. And um, you know we've done a good job of improving our equipment and our facilities on campus over the last two, three years to make sure that we're providing a strong practice environment. So I guess the, the important thing is we gotta be creative, we gotta think outside the box, and we just gotta find new ways to you know, get the absolute most out of every single practice during January, February. That is all the questions I have for it today. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Chris. Hi, I'm Jamal Harris. I'm here with Hilbert baseball player Patrick Whalen. How you doing? Hey, how's it going, Jamal? Thanks Good. for having me. Yeah, I'm just going to discuss a little bit about your um, baseball career here at Hilbert. So, um, Drew, it's up to me. You know, starting with high school, you went to Bishop Timon, right? Yeah, Bishop Timon. Um, I played. I was. I played there with uh, Manny McLean, another uh, current mm -hmm. Hilbert baseball member. He's my roommate. Yeah. Flash. Um and. Uh, you know, that was a great experience, made a lot of lifelong friends. And then, um, you know, I thought I was done with baseball at that point. I wasn't a very good player in high school. And then, um, you know, I, I just, I went to Canisius College for a year and I, I had the, I, the itch for the game to be able to play again, hit me again. So 
I ended up transferring to Madai. I was there for two years and then uh, Hilbert for the last two. And um, now I'm a current graduate student. Yeah, I was going to say that because I know um, you went from high school and then you went to Canisius where you didn't play. And then you went to Madai and it seemed like you had like a lot of success there. You were on the conference team, player of the year. So I know you said like you weren't a good player in high school, but like, did you like what, just improve your game? Just was just a better fit for you in college? Like what kind of was the switch to where you started having it was just, success. oh yeah, I mean, it was just the, um, you know, it was just a continuous drive to get better. I mean, I was, I've always been a person that really hasn't been, you know, never satisfied with, you know, kind of what's going on. I always want to strive for better. And it was because it was something I love so much. I really wanted to give it my all knowing that this is my only shot to be able to play collegiate baseball and, um, you know, really putting in hours and hours of both physical and mental work to be able to become that player. That's something I'm really pr proud of. And, um, you know, it's, it's given me a lot. It's given me a lot of lessons along the way. Yeah. What specifically do you think it was? Like maybe like just getting stronger, just um, you know practicing hitting more, catching, pitching, um, like anything specific, or kind of like just like it all just came together. Bro. Oh, I mean, I, I think it all just came together. It was just you know, like I said, countless hours. There was a lot of you know they always they always say that um, you know you want to put in the work when the lights are off. So when the lights are on, you know your, your game kind of shows. And I think that was um, very evident. And then you. You transferred over to Hilbert, and that success kind of carried over in your first year, too. Had a lot of um, success. So, you know, what were the differences, or maybe some similarities to kind of, you know, help that transition seem kind of seamless for you for the most part? Oh, 100%. It was the coaching staff as well as, you know, the guys in the team. I made it, 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 it was so seamless, it was ridiculous. And, you know, it, it became apparent almost right away that Hilbert was my true home. Um, I met so many great friends, guys like Mike Contini and Jack Doffick, guys that will be, you know, lifelong you know, uh, friends and people that I want to spend time around and everything else outside from the baseball field, as well as the great coaching staff we had. I know you, you talked about before the show about how you had uh, Coach Drew Fitrion, and he's been, you know, incremental to, you know, not only my success, but the team's overall success, the amount of hours he puts in behind the scenes that no one knows about. To be able to help, you know, bring this program to success is, it's ridiculous, as well as his assistants, Coach Tui, who is, you know, that's somebody that's not only a coach, but a friend, I would consider. Yeah. And I know you're for the first year, you know, as a team, I know um, overall you're under 500. I'm not sure, you know, really conference record, that stuff really matters too. But, you know, and then lost um, in the first round of the Roche. Like, what did you think needed to be maybe necessarily different, you know, as a team, you know, going into next year where, you know, the success, you know, kind of exploded? Yeah, I mean, that year was um... – I think it was a lot of guys coming together that were unfamiliar with each other as well as unfamiliar with the idea of winning. I mean, Hilbert baseball in the past has really not had a ton of success. And, you know, to be able to see, you know, we had some success early on in the season and it was kind of shocking everybody, you know, shocking myself, shocking a lot of my friends and everything. And, you know, when it came down to going to La Roche and, and uh, you know, playing in that playoff atmosphere, it, it was a new feeling for a lot of guys. And I think that's kind of what was a little intimidating as well as we were kind of a younger team at that point. Like I said, it was a lot of unfamiliarity for the most part. But then that really kind of, you know, that loss and that sting from that loss really drove the entire team, all the returners this previous year to, you know, really kick everything into high gear and have the success we did as a team. I mean, being one win away from the championship, that was something truly special. I know last year didn't end quite how you wanted, you know, losing, you know, that final game to Altoona. You know, what kind of, you know, you think maybe went wrong, you know, during, you know, that uh, those series of games. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess the only thing you can really pin that on is just uh, lack of depth. I mean, we were we were a we were a pretty small team last year in comparison to other Division three programs. We only having 25, 26 guys, something in that range. And at the end of the day, that Final Four weekend of the championship series, we played so many games in a row. It would just ran, ran out of pitching. Yeah, and um, you know th that's just the. At the end of the day, pitching wins or pitching determines wins or losses in, in baseball games. And um, it was unfortunate, but Coach Drew did a hell of a lot of recruiting this year. And, you know, we have, uh, I think the, it's the biggest roster in Hilbert history. So we're hoping to avoid that problem come uh, May of this year. Yeah, because I, like, I know you guys lost Big Red, but you still have a you know, pretty talented team. That team was very good. You're, you know, you're returning, you're bringing back, you know, more recruits. You have confidence that, you know, you'll get back there again this year. Oh, I mean, it's very easy to say that, you know, uh, but it's another thing to do it. And I think it's going to be a lot 
it's going to take a lot more than anyone knows. I think only the guys that were kind of around for last year really understand how how deeply we had to dig to be able to, you know, get ourselves to that point and, and, and how much, you know, internal stress and internal, you know, just work it took. I mean, it's going to take a lot to get back to that point, but I think, um, you know, with the blue collar group of guys we have, I think anything's going to be possible this year. Yeah. And now to my last question, I forgot to hit on it earlier. Why did you, um, you know, transfer from Adai to Hilbert? I know before, you know, they would still exist. I know they kind of like same conference rivals or whatever. What made you switch over to come to Hilbert? Um, you know, it was honestly, it, w- it was a combination of kind of looking for a fresh start as well as, you know, being able to forge a relationship with Coach Drew. Uh, meeting him was, like I said before, it Did was... Did he come seek you out? Like, Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, it, um, there's a whole release process and everything with looking to transfer and recruiting a Division three. But once that process was completed because, you know, my sister goes here and my brother actually ended up, ended up uh, going here as well. You know, so there was some familiarity with the school and, you know, talking with them, they loved it. So I decided to give it a shot and I was just blown away by the whole recruiting process. Coach Drew really sold me on the school and he definitely did not sell anything short. I mean, it's it's been an uh, excellent decision and Hilbert baseball will be something to carry with me for the rest of my life. Well, yeah, I'm glad you definitely came here and contributed to the team. It's been a great interviewing you, getting to know you. Thank you, Jamal. Hi, I'm Chris Cronin. I'm here with new women's hockey head coach. Earl Otter, Coach, thanks for being here. Chris, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Of course. Uh, we have a couple of questions for you. Uh, how many years have you been coaching hockey in general? Hockey in general, uh, about 30. Uh, college hockey in different various, or various roles, probably 26. So it's been a long time. Wow, that is a long time. Uh, where have you been coaching before you come before you came to Hilbert? I was a volunteer assistant at Cornell. I was a head coach at Morrisville. I was the head coach at Cortland, and I was the head coach at Wilkes University. Uh, Cortland and uh, Wilkes were with women. Morrisville was with men. Uh, Cornell was with both men and women. Well, you have a lot of stops. A lot of stops. Uh, it's been a long, strange trip. Oh. Uh, we're glad you're at Hilbert. Uh, to follow up on that, what attracted you to Hilbert? Well, I think as you pointed out, Chris, it's been a lot of stops. And this this stop here at Hilbert uh, is another chance to build a program, uh, which I really enjoy doing. Um, quite honestly, also, it's closer to my mom. Um, you know, she's getting up there in age. Um, it's, it's easier for me to get home now. Um, and I like the challenge. Uh, I like the community. I like the area. I don't mind snow. Um, I think we have a great opportunity to uh, expand not only hockey, but all the sports here. Uh, I got really good vibes from uh, Tim Sile, the athletic director, about uh, the direction that the program wants to go, and he wants to go with the athletic program. And the um, you know, all the emails that the president sends out in the direction that he wants to take the college were very encouraging. So it, it just seemed like a great fit. Perfect. Um, do you personally have any playing experience? Yeah, I played up until I was 17 and then, uh, you know, had to make a decision what I was going to do. Um, I chose to play soccer. Um, so I probably am a better soccer player than I'm a hockey player, but as a as a wide kid, I was probably I was a good goalie. So, but I just didn't have the opportunities that some of the kids have now to continue with my experience in hockey. So, I played soccer. Perfect. Um, you talked about being from the area and your mom and being from the area. What? Why do you think hockey is so important to this general area? Well, I think the Sabers have a ton to do with it. Um, I think being so close to the Canadian border. Um, you know, there's always, it, it, Buffalo is kind of like Minnesota and kind of like Toronto in a way that there's a rink almost on every corner. And that's because there's a need for it. There's a market for it. It's, uh, you know, it, it's a market driven activity. And there's lots of people here who want to play hockey because of, you know, because it's an exciting game. The Sabres, even though they're, you know, they go up and down. Um, overall, they've had good success. 
And I think it's just, uh, you know, one of those things that um, Buffalo is synonymous with. Perfect. Um, what are your goals for the hockey program here at Hilbert? Well, I'd like to, I think there's two different categories. There's the academic goals and there's the athletic goals. Athletically, um, you know, we'd like the kids to keep improving. We'd like them to understand that success isn't always winning, but it's a, a peace of mind in knowing that you did the best you could to become the best you can, um, which means hard work all the time. Um, I think academically, we want our kids to, we want our team to be the highest, uh, the team with the highest GPA on campus. And certainly we want our kids to graduate. Um, you know, as a person, I want to help them move on from uh, essentially high school through to the next step of their lives, which is real life. And then, uh, you know, if we can do all those things, then we'll accomplish the goals that we're looking for. Perfect. And my last question, outside of hockey, what is your hobbies? Uh, probably my biggest hobby is ice fishing and um, fishing in general, spending time with my family and going to church. Those are all things that I enjoy. It's, uh, that's what it is. Very nice. Well, Coach, thank you so much for your time today and good luck this season. Thanks, Chris. I appreciate your time. Welcome back to Hawk Magazine. I'm Chris Cronin. I'm here with Abby McNeil, forward from the women's hockey team. Abby, welcome. Thank you for having me. Of course. Um, we have a couple questions for you today. Abby, first off, where are you from? So I'm from Western Canada, specifically Calgary, Alberta. Very nice. And um, what attracted you to Hilbert and what um, were the challenges of coming from Canada to the United States to play hockey? So what attracted me mostly was them starting a new program here. And I thought that could be really fun to be a part of. Um, there was a lot of like decision making that goes into it because there's like kind of two frames you can go with hockey. You can go the NCAA route or the ACHA, which is club hockey. So deciding that was a really big factor which way to go, but ultimately at the end of the day, I decided the NCAA route. And then coming from Canada to the U.S. to play hockey, it's just been more like adapting to the play style here. Canada is more a little bit physically aggressive. So like the refs obviously are used to that in Canada. Here they're not so much. So they call a little bit more, but yeah. Perfect. Um, how long have you been playing hockey? Um, I've been playing hockey for about nine years. I didn't like originally start playing hockey. I was more into soccer actually, but everyone in my family played hockey and they were try trying to convince me for so long. And then my older sister was playing hockey. So I kind of just was like, well, I guess I'll give it a shot. Last year you, um, you got the first goal in Hilbert, um, history. Congratulations yes, on you. that. Um, could you just talk what it meant and this year, meaning to get your first win in uh, program history. Yeah, getting the first goal definitely was obviously a good feeling. Um, it was good to get that under our belts in the first game we played, even though it was definitely a tough game against a well-established school. But overall, I think it was just a great feeling. And our first win was really good to get this year. Um, it definitely took a full team effort, and just as soon as we got going, we were just going in that game. Perfect. Abby, I saw you won MVP last year. Congratulations. Um, how do you think you came to become MVP? Um, I think it's just about, you know, putting in the work day in and day out. Sometimes it gets challenging when you are, like, on the ice every day for practice but just keeping that high compete level, even in moments when maybe you don't feel that great or maybe you're tired that day. And then in games, just like battling through the adversity of facing like well-established programs really helped me get through that. Where do you see Hilbert Hockey in the next couple of years? Um, I think in the next couple of years, we're gonna have a lot more depth to our team considering we have such a large freshman class this year. So once they get older and obviously our sophomores get more experience in college hockey, I think we'll have a very strong team. Perfect. And my last question, why should kids become involved with hockey at an early age? Um, I think hockey is a very good all-around sport because it teaches you a lot. It's not like soccer, for example, is very like endurance based. It's very running. Hockey is more of a short sprint sport. You also need to have hand-eye coordination. It just, I think, brings in a lot of elements of other sports into one. Perfect.
And that's all the questions we have for today. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. That's all for this edition of Hawk Magazine. Be sure to stay tuned for future shows, and please remember to support our Hawks. To that I say, Hawk yeah.